Hello and welcome back to London. After much talking, the much anticipated September Fed meeting is just around the corner and I've been speaking to Miles Eakers from Savvy Trading about his currency positioning in a run up to this key market event. So obviously this much anticipated Fed meeting is finally approaching. It's just around the corner, it's next week. How are you positioning yourself in terms of the dollar in the run up to that meeting? Um, we've seen a lot of dollar selling since last Friday's uh, NFP data. Uh, going into that, we had uh, slightly dovish comments from Draghi, seeing the euro obviously trade down session low. Since then, we've seen a real push higher in cable and euro crosses. Uh, subsequently, we think uh, the Fed aren't going to taper next uh, next week. We think there's still not enough positive data, um, but it's going to be the minutes that come out indicating potentially over the next month or so tapering. As we saw in the last FOMC, we saw dollar buying. Uh, but I would be very surprised if they take it next week. I find this whole thing quite confusing. Isn't there an argument, no matter what decision, that it could be dollar positive? You can say uh, they start to taper. Great, that shows the U.S. economy is doing well. Let's buy the dollar. Or either way, you can. The other way you can say is that uh, great, that stimulus is still there. Let's buy the dollar as well. So, mm. so how does the market react in either situation? Well, I think it's interesting. Well, there's a lot of empirical evidence as interest rates have gone up, like the dollar hasn't necessarily benefited. You've got to look at the US as one of the biggest economies on the planet. If they start to grow and start to show signs of growth, this could be good for the rest of the planet. So it's not necessarily a dollar positive, but the interesting play will be in the equity space. All of a sudden, you get movements out of out bonds into riskier assets as such. Whether or not that's good for equities, I'm not so sure. But for me, I think overall we're looking at sterling as a key player at the moment as well. I think maybe euro dollar short is, is a trade that you'd be looking at. Yep. Let's talk about equities. So now you look at the US equities as well. Mm. So if we do see the beginning of tapering, what does that mean? Because surely that means a big sell-off because they've been pumped up so much by this, this injection of money from the Fed. Yeah, um, if I'm honest, I, I don't know what's going to happen. We've never really experienced this in the markets before. Personally, I look at equities, I think they're way overpriced. Anytime you've seen bad US data, you've seen equities push higher on the back and more stimulus. Vice versa is obviously true. So if all of a sudden this tapering starts to happen, I think they're going to do it gradually. So you're going to see sudden push downs in equities, but then they'll come out with a more dovish statement to give a bit of a soft balance. Overall, I think equities could be pushing down to the 1500 level, uh, but it's not necessarily going to cause the panic that everyone is expecting. Yeah, what are you going to be doing after that, those, mi those minutes are released, or we, we get that decision rather? Mm. So I've spoken to a lot of traders down the year. Many say don't trade immediately after the release mm. because that's when you never know what's going to happen. But at the same time, that's when there's a lot of volatility, which obviously traders like. So you're just going to be sat with your feet up or you'd be trying to get in there with some trades? Um, for me, I'm more of a longer term positional trader, so I'm not really looking for the volatility on an intraday basis. I'm looking at the overall direction of the market as a subsequent reaction to the, the minutes. Uh, the problem is what's going to be the build up to the minutes. Are the market going to be heavily short the dollar going into it? If so, I think there's a trade there to buy the dollar, especially against the euro. I'm not so sure about cable as the UK data is improving, but we are seeing a lot of overbought signals in sterling. So for me, I'd be going into the minutes looking at the build up and then obviously what comes out afterwards. Yeah, let's talk about sterling because you're right, there has been this slew of positive data. Uh, we've seen, uh, you know, the cable move to 158. Are you expecting it to move any higher or do you think it's going to come off that? Um, we're chatting on the floor and we've had a lot of people suggesting cable goes to 160. For me, I think it's overbought at this level. I think we see a squeeze on the downside, uh, already positioned in short cable trades on the back. of We've had a lot of positive data. All it takes is for a little bit of negative data to come out. Only slightly like the Australian dollar, sorry, Australian data overnight. See so a bit of a squeeze on the downside. For me, I'd soon be selling cable on these highs with a view that we've pushed down to maybe 157, 155 sort of area. Yeah. What about the trend with the Australian dollar? Because it did reach a three month high, mm. um, but then those pretty terrible unemployment statistics, statistics came out. So, what's the trend for the Australian dollar at the moment? Is it going to claw back the ground, which it lost? I don't think so. I think if you look at the yield curve in, in Australia, you look at probably the next six months to a year, RBA are going to be cutting rates, okay? And for me, that means Australian dollar is going to weaken against a lot of global basket of currencies. I think any squeeze on the upside, you look to fade into any rallies all the way up to 95, looking to target 80 in the longer term. Just to finish off for our viewers, what's your preferred trade at the moment that they should be looking at? Uh, I like being long the dollar. Uh, I have been for a while now. I think any rally should be faded. Short euro on rallies to 133.20, even up to 134. Uh, short cable on any rallies to 158 above their 160 and short Aussie dollar and rallies. I'm also looking at dollar CAD at the moment. I like being long down here at these levels, targeting 104, 105 on the upside. 
Well, thank you to Miles for his excellent analysis. I'll be back on the road throughout the city of London next week with more interviews. But for now, goodbye. Thank you.